Hi, it's Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Community TV, and we are here at the Coquitlam Public Library, and we thank them for donating this space, as well as we'd like to thank the Coquitlam First Nations peoples. With me today is Roy Shuck, the president of the Wilson Senior Center Advisory Association, and we're going to be talking about all things seniors. I have looked at your very extensive events page, and these seniors are busy. Tell me a little bit about the center itself, uh, Royce, if you don't mind. We'll start about a little bit about the history of it. Center has been around since 1993. Okay. Um, and it's it's one of the older um, senior centers in in the Tri Cities, uh, but we're focused solely on people in Port Coquitlam. Uh, although people can join who are members who live in Coquitlam or Tri or Port Moody. Mm -hmm. Um, and we used to have a, our own building just uh, east of the um, new recreational center. And when the new recreational center was built, we were uh, moved in. We moved into it, and we were given a, a, a little area called the Wilson Lounge, yes. which has a, it, which has a fully functioning chef's kitch kitchen with a fully certified chef uh, who is uh, in charge of it, and a seniors volunteer there and they make the lunches and the meals and so it's a place where people go to have uh, coffee in the mornings um, while they're waiting for their class to begin uh, then they have uh, we have meals at, at lunchtime mm -hmm. and uh, afternoon uh, people can come and sit talk and and we're also in the process of building a another area where people can come in and just sit and talk and and play games and uh, hang out hang out yeah yeah, just, yeah even teen teenagers need a place to hang out so so do seniors um, yeah. and that's a nice thing about the the our lounge is that in the afternoons after three three o'clock it's a youth lounge oh okay so it's for dual purpose it's dual purpose right. so it, it it actually helps the taxpayers because you're getting more bang for your buck, which is, you know, like as a taxpayer in Port Coquitlam, I like that. Okay, that's really good. I I love all of these different events that you have, uh, that you put on for the seniors. What's up, Wilson, you know? Yes. And um, I think it's fantastic. There's so many different things that they can do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's eating, whether it's learning um, how to do different workshops, you know, playing guitar, and um, even celebrating birthdays. Yes. I think that's fantastic. Um, I think that, you know, coming out of the pandemic, if we can talk about that for a moment, you know, a lot of seniors stayed home. There was a lot of loneliness going on, a lot of mental health issues issues as well right here in our own community um like you said this is this is catered to seniors in port port coquitlam yes um but uh what happens with the seniors outside of the area like if i'm a senior in port moody can i still come yes absolutely i don't, I don't pay a membership fee or do i um you can join you can become a member it's similar like my mother-in-law when she was living lived in port coquitlam but she was a member of dogwood right right so i don't think they really care Okay. Uh, and we don't care if you if you're willing to pay the nineteen dollars and fifty five cents. I think it's a year to be a member. You can be you're a member. Um, That's great. If but if you're a senior and you're not a member, you get you have to pay a little bit more. Right, right. I saw um, that. So mm -hmm. that people and people do that. They'll they'll, have, they'll come in with uh, uh, somebody will bring their grandparent in or their father or mother in, uh, and they'll they'll. We do bingo, for example, every every Wednesday at one o'clock. So if you want to play bingo, and a lot of people do because they like to win the money, the big money, I think they can win. Uh, somebody told me that twenty dollars was somebody. I won twenty dollars. I'm so happy. Oh, wow. that's nice. <laughs> but it it's it it's a chance for people to get together, to talk, to create new friends, um, and to to have uh, a, a, lo a lot of fun. Um, one of the things that we're doing for, this, uh, oh, and during the pandemic, we set up a program called the Phone Buddies Program. Okay. So what we did is we, uh, a lot of our people who are seniors who are over 80, 80 um, we found out who they were and we phoned them. Uh, so there's about 12 volunteers and we phoned, it had about 12 to 15 people each that we phoned once a week just to see how they were doing and how everything was uh, everything was going with them if they needed any help uh, or, or, or how you know what was going on in their lives because mm -hmm. some of them had nobody else to talk to right. I remember one man that I talked to 
Um, I said, how's it going? Because I've been talking to him for a while, and he was, he was worried that his wife was sick. And I said, how's your wife? And he says, well, she passed two days ago. Oh. And so I was able to get him to get reach out to get some help uh, from some of the social service agencies, mm -hmm. put him in touch with the, the, those folks so that he could manage through. He was 90 years old. Right. Right. So it's important. The Phone Buddies program uh, was a really important part of what we did. Um, the other activity that, that we like to get seniors to come out, you talked about the birthday parties. So if you're having a birthday, so every two months, we put on a birthday party. Um, and we have a band, we have cake, we have uh, games and activities. Mm -hmm. And if it's your birthday, you get to come for free if, right. you're, if you're a member. If you're not a member, I think it's eight to ten, twelve, eight dollars or twelve dollars. I'm not sure the exact ten. amount. Ten. Okay, um, ten dollars, and they, and you get to come and and celebrate with the people who are having their birthday. Every second month, the city puts on, and we support the city uh, in this. So we help. They put on a, a social activity, mm -hmm. and we're ha we're starting with the help of Mayfair Terrace and a spirit uh, a storia. We're having an Elvis impersonator come for mm -hmm. our September launch of the year. Right. Um, and uh, he's, Elvis impersonators are not cheap. <laughs> no, no, they're not. So Astoria and uh, Mayfair Terrace are, are helping us. And so it's going to be a real wild party because it, it's Elvis from the 50s, which is my era. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> lunch with the King of Rock. King of Rock, right? that's right, that's right. So it's going to be a lot of fun for the people. And they have to register, people have to register. Mm -hmm. um, but we we've uh, we can get about seventy to hundred people, in and uh, so we're hoping it's booked that we have a lot of people come in, uh, just to have so some your, fun. Is your calendar busy? At, like as busy as this as this newsletter? <laughs> is, do you go to all these events? Like you, do you have like a little cot there that you sleep? No, I, there's I, a lot going on here. This, this there, if I was a senior, I'd have my calendar full of things at Wilson Center. That's for sure. And there are people who do that. And, yeah. And, um, you have to register, and, and so a lot of times I'm too busy to register. Mm. Oh, so you haven't registered, so you can't go. I can't go. Right. I, I, can, I, I can come and, and I peek my head yes, in. Yes, and see. see, and see. And and do people just register through an email, or is there a system? Through, there, there's a system through the city. Um, oh, through the city. To, uh, and there's a phone number on, on this, which uh -huh. is our Tuesday talk program. Right. And it, that's another service that, uh, program that we run. So. On the second, uh, so September 10th and September 24th, we're having uh, workshops, and the first one's on uh, how do you get more cash out of your property. Uh, so they're going to come and talk about that. So there's a lady from uh, Melissa Sims from uh, Three Rivers Law, uh, Law Society, law offices, so she's going to come. And then we're having the Wilson Pharmacy Group come in and talk about um, vaccinations. So what vaccinations do you need? Um, uh, and people register for that, the same phone number that to register for any and of our, our activities. Who these uh, speakers for the talks? Uh, one of my board members, Pat Dales. Oh, okay. Uh, so you and have a board member that is, is specifically uh, looking at speakers to come a, in on. Yeah, you delegate things when you're the president, right? That's right. But I, yet you're so busy, though. You're so busy, Royce. You're so busy, you can't remember, you can't register. But that's okay. But you, so Well, you know, I, I do other things. I know you do. I know. Um, but, yes, I have a great board. I have... Um, um, there's three members of the board, Doug, uh, Donna, and Linda, who organize bus excursions. So we do a bus excursion, and we try to keep the cost of that low um, so that uh, between 50 and uh, 40 and $60. Uh, so our last trip was this summer to the Maritime Museum, mm. um, and we got a tour of that. And uh, the one before that was to um, Steveston. Mm -hmm. And, and they're now organizing one for October. I'm not sure exactly where, where they have it. So I have a group of people that do that. Um, Pat does the Tuesday talks. Um, Ann Pratt and um, her team do the socials. So I have a, like, I've got a 14 member board. By the way, if you're interested, we are having our um, annual general meeting and we're looking for uh, new board members. New board members. And how old do you have to be to uh, to join? 60. Uh, 60. Yeah. Like, there's no exceptions. No. Nope. I have to show you ID? No. <laughs> We're not going to ask you for ID. Uh, well, the city may, because they, they ask for your birthday. 
Right, right. right uh, exactly. when, you, when you become so, a member. So it's all being done through the city. That's the support that you're getting yes. through uh, the city of Port Coquitlam. And you have a lot of drop-in classes. You've got things that you need to register for. There's excursions. It seems like you're really um, following like uh, and, and, and introducing just a, a wide range of different events. That's, like It doesn't seem like a senior will ever be bored no. in, in any of these things that they're doing. I have a question, though. It's, yep. it's quite intuitive of you guys to think about the sort of the phone system, like you said, everyone over age. We found out who that was. Who sort of came up with that? Because it wasn't something so natural, like during a pandemic, like what can we be doing? You know, everybody, like, I don't know, like in my generation and younger, of course, like people, you know, they're texting all the time mm-hmm. or they're, you know, they don't really pick up the phone to call anyone anymore. People don't have landlines. And so what, what sort of spearheaded that for you? We were listening to Dr. Henry saying, you know, to call a friend or is this something that you guys sort of came up with on your own? Um, there were groups, I knew of people who were doing this in Langley, there were people doing it in White Rock, uh, people that I knew. Yes. And so, um, at a board meeting we talked about it, um, and we decided that it would be a good idea to do it, and then we worked, we got, worked with the city to identify the people that yes. needed to be yes. contacted. Right. Um, and then the volunteer, uh, people at, that the city trained uh, uh, us, how to how do you phone somebody? How do you talk to somebody? Okay. How do you leave that first message? Because I don't answer the phone if I don't know your number, and a lot of seniors won't do that. They won't right. answer the phone. So you need to leave a message. So we had a we had a script, right? And so all of the people we train. It's Royce. I'm, I'm from. from da, yeah. da, da, da. Give me, I'm just checking in on you, something like that. Exactly. Yeah, that's very, that's very, yeah. very you're, you're right, you're right about that. I'm curious, have you had any talks about um, about seniors like being scammed and what to look for? Has I'm sure that's come up, you know, I'm, I'm hearing all about things like that with seniors giving their money and people coming to their home to get an envelope full of money. What, uh, what, what kind of other, other types of talks have you, have you had with seniors? Yeah, so one, uh, uh, in the Tuesday talks that we do, we, we have spent, uh, we've had, I think, two workshops on fraud, and, and we brought in the RCMP, and we've had other speakers come in to talk about fraud and, and, el- and elder abuse. One of the, the, the things that um, we do, we've elder done. Elder abuse, yes. Yes. So um, we are now, we just joined the, a part of the Community Resource Network, which is a, it's an organization throughout British Columbia that looks at the issue of elder abuse. And so we're, um, we just joined that uh, in June. Um, so we're starting to work at, look at programs and, and how we can help seniors uh, who are um, in the situation. And when we talk about elder abuse, we don't, it's not about me beating you up uh, or hitting you. It's about me taking your trust and taking your money, taking your house. I had one lady tell me, I, I, I do workshops on this myself in another capacity. And I was in North Vancouver, and I was talking to a, a woman who had her son put her, at, got, convinced her to put his name on the house deed because he, it, for uh, when, when she was ready to go, he would inherit. So this would save money on taxes, he told her. Mm-hmm. So she put his name on it. Then after about six months, he suggested that she take her name off and he put his name only, which he, she did. Three months later, he kicked her out of her house. So she was, do you know, a good lawyer. And her friends had rallied around her and, and she was going after her son to get her house back. Mm-hmm. But that's the kind of stuff that, that seniors trust their family members, and family members sometimes take advantage. Mm-hmm. Their thinking is, oh, belongs to me anyway. I'm going to get the inheritance from my mom or yeah, my dad. I, mean, I think that on, on the whole, you know, when you first started talking about that, it, it makes sense. Okay, yep, no problem. I'm going to add your name, you know, and then the next step happened, and then the next step happened, and before you know it, she's homeless. Yep. Where is she going to go? Exactly. Right, so you help in these areas. This is one of your things. Now, yep. have you always been a volunteer, Royce? Um. In the community, no. When I was working, when I was teaching, I did a lot of volunteering. Uh, did, but, right? Yeah, but um, I started to volunteer in the community uh, in 2007 when I was on the, became a member of the board of directors of Share. Okay. And I was on from 2007 to 2014. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then um, in 2000, and I did workshops for the Wilson Seniors in the old building. And then in 2020, I became president. So, and I've been president since because nobody else wants to do it. <laughs> nobody else wants to do it. Yeah, exactly. You get a volunteer. What, what, what are some of the um, the more sold out, if you will, you know, events that you're having? Like, where what what are se- seniors interested in? Is it pickleball? Like, what what are they what are they interested in doing? And you know, do you see like, oh wow, this was a really good event we have. We need to do this four times a year, or you know, like what what sort of are they interested in? Well, all of the things that we have in the dropout uh, in our dropout programs, um, we have. Um, uh, are are of interest that people do. Um, our bus excursions are of very popular. Th- they're popular. Um, we the um, the kitchen. The, we do things in the kitchen uh, is very popular. Um, we have um, the Tuesday talks. We have about between forty and fifty people coming per mm-hmm. session. Um, and then what we do is we look to see what programs um, aren't, you know, very in- interested. So, um, we, we, for example, Mahjong, we, we just, it, it's now, uh, a lot of people are coming to that. But there's some other card games that people don't, don't, don't come to. Mm-hmm. So do we continue them or do we not? Right. And the city, um, Belgeet and Caitlin, um, do a great job and, uh, of, of looking at, what programs are not functioning, and they'll come to us and say, "Do we want to do this?" And for example, on uh, food, um, we they about food prices are going up, right? Yeah. It, it, for everybody, and including uh, k- uh, kitchens, and and so what we did is we had a discussion with the city about raising the prices on the food. So we looked at how what was the best way, what we thought were the best, what was the best way to to increase. Prices, how to do it over over time, and then um, we were able to put take some of our money budget and, and give it to the city, so that they could keep try to keep costs low. But prices yeah. still went up. Yeah, they went up maybe you know. one or two dollars. Yeah, no, yeah. fifteen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. no, I, I'm looking at all of the. Um, the prices that are on the sheet, and it seems like very affordable. And you know, some of these people, they're they they're retired, they're living on their pensions, and um, you know, uh, in terms of like activity that they can do, like I'm sure if they went bowling just on their own or did other things, it would cost them double and if not triple. Yep. Especially some of these lunches, you can't get a lunch for ten dollars. No, that's right. Yeah. And 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 the other thing that we did, we know that there are some people who come into the the center who can't afford the even the low prices that are oh, there. I see. So you subsidize uh, those? We have worked with the city. We said if you, if somebody comes in and identifies, and you know that they can't, they can't afford the food, mm-hmm. uh, just buy the food for them. We'll we'll pay for it. Okay. So That's we good. and 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 with and same thing with memberships. If somebody can't afford a membership um, to get the discounts, we we can we can do that. The other thing we did I, was that was really interesting was the uh, we did a health and wellness fair um, in June. At the end of Seniors Week, mm-hmm. um, and it was a lot of. Uh, we had about forty different community uh, vendors come in, who all dealt with uh, health and wellness issues for seniors, and we had about four hundred people come through the event. Uh, it was free, free yeah. to free to the seniors, uh, so you could gather all of the information you needed mm-hmm. um, uh, about. So if you had hearing uh, problems, which I do, I have hearing aids, um, you could get uh, set more up information more information about, about it. You can. Yeah. Hearing clinic, hearing booth there, and yep. then yep. another booth over here that pertains to, to senior living and things like yep. that, right? Yeah, it was it was great. It was a wonderful thing. So that was fun. The other thing we do, which is a lot of fun, is, uh, and we've done it for two years in a row, we were part of the Maple Dance. Okay, tell me about that. Two years ago was the 100th anniversary of the Maple Dance in Port Coquitlam. And um, when I was younger, I did the Maple Dance when I was in grade three, I think, I you know, so I I don't admit that a lot, but I I did, and I it was I think I remember fondly. So anyway, the the, uh, the city came to us and asked us if we would take part in the in the maypole. We usually go in the parade, but they asked if we would take part in the maypole dance. And I thought it was a great idea, so we took it. I took it to the board, uh, and the board uh, we had a lot of discussion on, it, but they everybody came around and said, "Yeah, it's a great idea." So then we recruited. We got uh, thirty people. Uh, seniors, 
and they had to practice every two two times a week for six or eight weeks to learn all the the moves and the maple dance. And uh, they did a hell of a job at in the first um, maple at the hundredth birthday. So then uh, Erica, who is the lady in charge of, of special events in the city, asked us again if we would do it the second year. Mm -hmm. And I, th I thought it was pushing it. Uh, anyway, um, I, we put out the word to, to the membership, and uh, they came forth, and we did the uh, did the maple dance again. So a, a lot of fun. So I don't know if we're going to do it next year. Uh, it depends on whether or not we get the the groundswell of of activity. But mm -hmm. but um, it was it was a big hit. The, the community seemed to like it. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, we also have been supporting the Maple um, Maple Royal Party since 1993 as, as an association. So Maple means a lot. And it, it, it's, a, it's a great activity for the community. Mm -hmm. um, and we were, I was very, we were very fortunate to take part in it. Although um, I had leg injury, so I couldn't take part in the dances in, in each year. But right. Um, it, it's but nonetheless, fun. you bring the, the, the events and the ideas to the table and you all decide collectively as a yes. board if it's something you want to do and then you put it out to the membership, yep. right? Just out of curiosity, how many members do you have? Fourteen. No, 14 board members. 14 members. 1,100 members. 1,100. That's the number I was looking for. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's a nice thought. Yeah, uh, there's, there's just, I, I love this because I feel there's hope for me. I can, do, <laughs> I, can, I can still continue to do all these exciting things that, you know, maybe I want to continue on into my into my senior years, which is not that far away, by the way. Um, I have just good genes, I guess. I'll thank my mom for that. But is there anything else that uh, we should let our viewers know about uh about the Wilson Senior Center? Yeah, um, as I said, we are, we, we do the recreational side, mm -hmm. but we're also a registered charity. Oh, so right. we, 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 so we bring, we apply for grants and get some money. Mm -hmm. And, and we have, we do uh, helping hands at Christmas. So again, we find low income seniors uh, who need some extra, an extra, extra cash at Christmas. So we give them a hundred dollar gift certificate. Nice. Uh, so they can spend it on, Whatever they need, so sometimes it, sometimes it's not food. Some you know people give a lot of food, but you don't need food. Uh, so you get you, you, maybe that little extra present for your grandchildren, right? But a hundred dollars, it's it, it's a little nice gesture. So we do that every year. Um, we also have the family uh, farmers market coupon program, mm -hmm. which is a great program. Uh, so we I think it's thirty or thirty five dollars a, a week for the duration of the of the of the, of the Market, market, mm -hmm. and it can be used in any farmers market in the Lower Mainland mm -hmm. or in BC, actually. Um, and it, and so you get thirty thirty five dollars, and you can take it and you can buy your extra food that you need. Mm -hmm. um, and we focus on seniors, so the the city does does a great job. They they provide coupons for families right. and younger younger people, and then we say, okay, well, let's take out the seniors from the mix. We'll we'll help as many of those as we can. And then, so we we do that, and and we had a member give us um, donations. So we get donations. Uh, Harkness Towing is is a great support of ours, as is the Rotary Club of Port Coquitlam, mm -hmm. and then individual members give us donations, and and they get charity receipts because we are a registered charity. Um, and we had one member give us a huge amount of money last year, uh, so we could supplement uh, the food insecurity program. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're we're trying to do as as much as we can to help the seniors low-income seniors, um, and so the subsidy for the membership, subsidy for the food if the person needs it, um, is, is there um, in addition to doing what we do for the recreational side, making sure that the programs that the city, Port Coquitlam, Carrie and her group, uh, Belgique and uh, Caitlin and Melissa have some really good programming, and we make sure that they're, yeah, they're, that would work for seniors. So it, it's a... It's a nice uh, mix of two things. One is we c and we give back to the community, and 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 nobody know we everybody knows us as the recreational side, but nobody knows we have been the, working as a charity, and we've done a lot of a lot of things. I think over the last four years, for example, we've given, mm -hmm. we've been able to give back to the community about eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars worth of of support for seniors, yeah. That's great. Uh, low income seniors. That's great. Is this What's Up Wilson? Is this in the Poco Rec Center, or do you do do you send this out to people? This uh, everybody gets this by email. By email. But if 
uh, some people don't like email, so they can you can, you can pick it up at, at in Poco in Poco at the rec center and, right. and see all of the activities that we have going. And I see here if people need to contact um, the, uh, Wilson Seniors at PocoCloton.ca. Yep. And is that to sign up and or anything like that? Yes. Uh, to to find give more information, we also have a Facebook page, Wilson Seniors, okay. um, and we have I think 175 members of that. Okay. Um, so people, we keep keep in touch with people um, and make sure that, that the seniors don't ever get bored. Um, I, I remember my dad telling me one time that boredom is a state of mind. It's not, some, it's not an activity. If you're bored, fix your thinking. Right. right? There's so much to do. Your dad and, was wise. Yes, he was. Yes. Um, and, and there's a lot of things going on in Port Coquitlam. There's a, there's a, the, the city of Port Coquitlam does a heck of a job with uh, providing not only for seniors, but a lot of youth activities, like I said, Dual, dual activity, and we're looking forward to next year doing some more intergenerational activities where we can oh, help work with, with the youth and the youth can work with us because a lot of seniors don't have grandkids no. or are close and a lot of ch uh, teenagers and younger folk don't have grandparents that they can relate to. So I think it's really important that they communicate and get together. Great. Well, thanks so much for being here today, Royce. We really appreciate your input and your insight. Uh, today we're listening to Royce Shook, the president of the Wilson Center, the Wilson Senior Center Advisory Association. Their AGM is coming up. Check them out on Facebook. If you want to volunteer with this organization, I guarantee you will not be bored. I'm Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Community TV. That was really good. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that.